What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are having a great day as usual. So for this video guys, I'm going to be reacting to a stand-up clip from Louis CK. And the clip that I'm reacting to is Nigger Jim, so let's jump right into the clip. Hopefully it's funny, we'll have a little discussion after. Let's go! I try to be a good dad, but you know, like the life just kind of takes off and kids start, you know, they get their own ideas and their own. My, my nine-year-old, she's just figuring out about lying. And that's a tough thing. It's hard to roll that one back because lying is pretty amazingly useful <laughs> in life. It is. It's like, how do you tell a kid not to use a thing that just solves every possible problem <laughs> like magic? How do you... Because that's why kids lie because they're in trouble. They lie because they're in more trouble than they can take. You know, because kids, the nine year old, when a nine year old lies, it's not for some weird Machiavellian, you know. <laughs> Do you know what my teacher said about you? It's interesting. <laughs> they don't just make shit up. They lie because they're in trouble. And it's more than they get, because trouble is too much for a kid. Trouble, for grown ups, we can take trouble. We don't care. We just go, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, am I in trouble? <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> we don't care. But to a little kid, trouble is like this m horrible. Did you drink the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she doesn't know how to handle it. <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you drink that? Well, all right then, have a nice day. <laughs> How do you then tell her, yeah, don't ever apply that perfect solution again <laughs> to terrifying things? Mark Twain once said, a man who always tells the truth doesn't have to remember what he said. And that's great. But Mark Twain also said, there once was a big black guy named Nigger Jim. <laughs> so, I don't know if 100% of the things he said were perfectly awesome. <laughs> really, Mark, Nigger Jim, you're gonna go with, that's the best you could do to name the, yeah, got, got a nice ring to it, Nigger Jim. Yeah, well, it's a little on the nose, isn't it? <laughs> Could have called him Black Mike. I mean, just a little, <laughs> take it down one notch of the, uh, thanks for that, Mark. Anyway, so while we're in this area, <laughs> now that I know you guys are cool. <laughs> 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 No, um, no, oh no, but, uh, my but, uh, God. but, but, <laughs> this is a story that takes place, I'm gonna tell you the story, it's kind of a messy story, it takes place over a lot of years, because it started, it started That's with my up. friend Mike, well, funny. who told me the story, this happened to him back in the 90s, uh, he was going home for Christmas, and, uh, he lives in Connecticut, he grew up in Connecticut, in some shitty shit town, in shitty, shitty Connecticut. And he didn't like going home. He's one of those people, he came from a place, doesn't like it anymore. And he goes back, he doesn't know how to ha handle his family, you know? And he came from a family of white racists and he doesn't like going home, but it's still home. So he went home for Christmas one year and everybody's hanging out during the day, talking, having lunch. And his father and his brother both work at this factory and his brother's grousing about his day at work. And he goes, yeah, and then this fucking nigger fell asleep with the forklift. And then my, my friend Mike heard that and he went, oh God, why, why am I part of this people? I hate this. And he felt bad. And then that night he's in the kitchen and he's having a warm milk or whatever. And he, I don't know why that's, I don't know why that's funny, but what that says to him. Yeah, because he's a pussy. No. He's just sort of having some time to himself. And his cousin comes downstairs. He's staying and his cousin, he likes his cousin. That's the one person he always felt connected with. And his cousin's like, what's wrong, man? And he says, well, geez, I come home and I hope that everything would be, you know, normal. But then my brother says, oh, he's about the factory and this nigger fell asleep with the forklift. And his cousin goes, 
oh my God, the nigger fell asleep with the forklift. <laughs> so this is the first part of the story, okay? So Mike tells me that story about how he's just not listened to by anybody in his family. And then later on, I get a job writing on a TV show for Cedric the Entertainer, great guy. And he had a show and he hired a writing staff, half white writers, half black writers. So at lunchtime, we talk about race. It was just, a, it, we'd have these provocative, interesting conversations, trading notes about race, with the white writers and the black writers. And I told that story. I told the whole thing about the guy, the nigger in the forklift, and then the cousin saying, the nigger in the forklift. And then <laughs> one of the writers, a black writer, he goes, there's nothing worse than a nigger falling asleep in the forklift. <laughs> Making it harder for the rest of us. Still, Nobody's quite hearing what my friend <laughs> was going through. Uh, and then, about a year later, I'm hanging out with my friend Dino. Dino's Greek, he has no dog in the race. He doesn't care either way. He's Greek, Greeks aren't white or black. They're just, he's just got a big nose and he just stands there. <laughs> I told Dino the whole story. I told him about the guy, the forklift, and the guy, and then the black one. And then Dino says, how do you fall asleep at a forklift? <laughs> right, guys, great stuff there by Louis C.K. It's been a while. Honestly, it's been a while since I watched a Louis C.K. clip, and I love that dark humor that's bordering on like inappropriate stuff to say. But the fact that Louis C.K. says it is just great. Um, hopefully, he will be able to move past what he did in the past. And, like, we'll get to a point where he's able to put out specials. And we're all able to come together and laugh, you know? That's what I think comedy is about. So, hopefully, moving into the next decade, the 2020s, we're all able to move past what happened in the 2010s. And we could just accept a lot of the, the stuff from comedians as humor, as jokes, as stuff that's going to make us laugh. And... Things that make us laugh actually bring us together. So I can't wait for the next Louis C.K. special because I really love him. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video because it helps the video and the channel a lot. But I'm going to wrap it up because I've just been rambling a little bit. So take care of yourself. Stay safe because it is a crazy world and there are a lot of crazy people. But most importantly, guys, you already know by now. Peace.